Okay, welcome to introduction to AB Computer Science A, Unit 2B, using objects. In this case, we're looking at string objects. Okay, so again, let's look at our boilerplate to get our Java programs working. We always need class. In this case, I'm going to be using Unit 2B. I need my parentheses to start and end the class. And I'm going to make my uh, main method. So public static void main. And notice that is lowercase and string and again this won't make sense yet uh, but it is just something you need to memorize at this point it will all be explained at some point so we are now looking at uh, part 2.6 which is string objects and we're looking at concatenation some of this we looked at before concatenation literals and more okay so um, might be a little bit noisy in the background I apologize for that so we're gonna make a string so name one equals new string. And I'm going to say Zaphod Beeblebrox. Zaphod Beeblebrox. OK, and that is a character from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. As I mentioned before, if you've never read this book, stop the video now and go buy it and read it, then come back to us. Um, so let me save that into the correct folder. Oops, that is not the correct folder. Uh, desktop, job intro videos, and save. Okay, so um, I have made a new string. Now, this is one way of doing it. Uh, I do not have to do it that way. Java is kindly gives us a nice shortcut. I can say string name two equals Ford Prefect, also a character from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So what I can do at this point is I could say system.out.println, and I'll say... Uh, let's see, let's say president, well, I'll just leave it there, name one, name, he is the president of the galaxy, and name one plus uh, name two, uh, name two, oops. And this is, this is already concatenation. Concatenation is just a fancy word for combining. So we took this string, added it to this string object, added it to this string, and added it to this string object. Now, just a, a quick aside, strings are not the same as ints, booleans, or doubles. Uh, a string is actually an object reference, and that'll become important later. But for now, just it's enough to understand that it is not actually a primitive. Uh, the primitives are the built-in types. This is something that's been kind of added on, and a string is made up of characters. And I'll leave it at that for now. So let's compile that and run it and see what happens. Okay, so we got Zephod Beeblebrox and Ford Prefect. Um, so let us let's go ahead and put that here under concatenation, since we've already done that. And so we've added all of these together. So now I can make some more strings. I'm going to call this first name. And this is Arthur, again, from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. String last name. He is dent. And I'm going to make a new string called full name. I'm going to make that blank. Oops, make that blank. Okay. So what I can do okay, is I could do something like this. I could say full name equals first name plus last name. Okay. Or I could do something like this, full name. Oops full name equals first name plus, now I want to put a space there, plus last name. I want to put a space. And another thing I could do is full name plus equals last name. Now this will be the equivalent of this. There'll be no space. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take that out of there and Actually, no, that was not correct. I apologize. Uh, forget that one. Full name plus equals last name is not correct. That would just give us the last name. Um, so what I'd have to do is full name plus equals first name. And then since full name is nothing, full name plus equals last name. That's assuming that we didn't have those in there. Okay, from the beginning. But let's just do it like this then. Um, Let's do full name 
Yeah, let's, let's do it with let's do it with the uh, space in the middle. So again, concatenation is combining strings. So let me print this out. And system, oops, system out dot print ln full name plus full name. So let's try that and run it. Okay, so we got our full name is Arthur space Dent, which is what we wanted. Now, uh, we can also concatenate, and we've seen this already. This is just a review. Concatenation, concatenation with the primitives. Okay, so remember our primitives were Boolean, Boolean, uh, int, and uh, what was it, doubles we're doing here. Okay, so let's say int, the answer 42 which we've seen before so i can say system dot out dot print ln the answer the ultimate answer answer, answer to life the universe to life universe comma and everything is quote plus the answer plus Quote, I like to put a period at the end and save that and run it. And let's see what we get. Oops, put a space in there, not good. Okay, it's a bad habit. So notice again, camel casing, small t, big A. And there we go. The ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything is 42. If you read the novel, you understand why that is. Something with printing that you'll see a lot are is called an escape sequence. Escape sequences. Okay. So for example, let's say I wanted to print out the following. Okay. Why are you so far away? Comma, she said. And that's a quote, so I want to put some quotation marks around why are you so far away. Can I watch, see the colors are changing there a little bit weirdly? Um, and that's a line from The Cure. And so if I try to compile this and run it, we're gonna get an error. So you see line 28, uh, right parentheses ex, uh, expected. So it's kind of, you see the little caray is pointing to here. So there's a problem. Okay, so basically our string, remember strings are contained by quotation marks. Okay. But the problem here is we actually want to print a quotation mark. So it kind of throws things off. So the escape character is the backward slash. I think that's the backward one. So what that does is instead of treating this like the final quotation mark, okay, it treats it as an actual character and it'll get printed out. So let me run that. Okay, so you can see now I was able to get some quotation marks like that. Now the escape characters, um, th there's more than just the uh, the quotation mark. Um, so let me uh, take a look here. I think I have a list somewhere. Ah, that's right. Okay. So if I wanted to say print system system dot out dot print ln, something went wrong. Print ln. So let's say I want to actually print a slash. I have to do an escape character a slash. You know, that is a slash. I think it's a backslash. Hope I didn't get those backwards. Um, that is a backslash. Okay, and I can run that. And there we go, I got my backslash. I could also do something along the lines of like this, system.out.println. There is actually uh, the new line character. Use that. So I say, I just, oops, I just printed, just printed two extra blank lines. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so we got, so we had our print line, so that went to the next line, and then 
new line, new line, and then print two extra blank lines. And the final one that we'll be using, uh, out.print.ln, is slash t for tab. So let me say um, a slash t, b slash t, c, let's just do abcs. So this, this lets us kind of align columns to the tab stops. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So you can see A, B, C. So what that does is if I want to go ahead and do uh, alpha, beta, there's no C, so we'll say gamma, and we'll run that, it gives us a tab rather than the spaces. So it lets us line up the text a little bit easier. Um, you may find that useful, you may not. But uh, definitely the, the new line character you'll be seeing a lot. And this will be seeing if you want to print quotation marks. So definitely make sure you're familiar with how to run that. Um, so strings. Um, just like with our previous example uh, with the dog class, there are various string methods. Now, we're not going to look at all of them. Uh, there, there, there are quite a few. But here are the ones that you definitely want to know for the AP exam. And again, the AP exam changes from year to year, um, so you know, please look at the, the more recent materials. But I'm doing this in 2019, so hopefully it'll be pretty up to date for, the, for the, the time being. So we can find the length of a string. So I'm going to say full name uh, length and gth plus full name dot length. And because it's a method, we have the parentheses. Don't forget the final parenthesis, which matches this parenthesis. So you're always going to have an even number of parentheses. Okay, unless, unless in here you decide to, to put a parenthesis. But outside of the quotation marks, you always have an even number. Okay. Um, so let me try that. Okay, so full name's length is 11. So let's check that. Uh, full name was a while ago. And what was the full name? Arthur Dent. So A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The space is, a, space is a character, so that's 7. 8, 9, 10, T is 11. Okay, so we do have 11 characters, which is very, very important. Okay, if we need the length of a string. So uh, next one up. The next one is something called substring, which is something you'll see and be using a lot of, uh, especially on the AP exam. And watch what I do here. Um, full name, substring, and this is not the actual format. Let's let's do 0, 06 for now, and let's see what happens. So watch what I do here. So it's full name dot substring, zero comma six. So and what did I do that I told you not to do? Don't forget the closing parenthesis. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so zero comma six is Arthur. So strings ha are made up of characters. So characters, each character has its own index. So in the case of Arthur Dent, A is zero. So it always starts at zero, don't forget that. Okay, that's a, a very big uh, beginner gotcha. Always starts at zero. So R is one, T is two, H is three, U is four, R is five. So in this case, okay, this six is what we call non-inclusive. Okay, uh, I know it's hard to tell because of the way we did it, there is no space there. You can't say that there's a space at the end of that. Okay, it actually stops with five. Okay, so let me change Arthur to Arthur Dent. Uh, let me get get rid of the space just to demonstrate that. All right, or I'll put the, I'll put a plus here so we can see what that looks like. Okay, so. So we can see that there's a character. Okay. So notice the plus did not appear because the plus is actually the sixth character. So it starts on the zeroth character and goes up, but not to that next character. Okay. So let's try that with a one and see what happens. Because that'll tell us a little bit uh, about how it actually functions. So let me try one six. Okay, and I'm gonna run it. Compile and run, I should say. And we still get Arthur. 
Okay, so that plus sign didn't come out. So it, it's starting index, ending index plus one. And that's where it really confuses a lot of people. Okay, and honestly, I, I find it confusing as well. Okay, so let's go moving on. We also have the next one, so full name and index of. Okay, in this case, I'm going to do dent. Okay, and I wonder if you can guess full name dot index of quote dent. Don't forget that second parenthesis at the end there. Okay, so what this will tell us is whether or not dent exists in our string and what the index of dent is. Okay, so index of dent is seven. So let's go back up and take a look at this. I should tell you what, why don't we do it this way? Um, make, it, make our lives easier. I should have done this earlier. Well, I just print out here system.out.print and yeah, ln full name. So that way we can just kind of be a little bit easier. So let's run that again. So index of dent. So again, notice the index is seven. So let's count that out. Remember, a is zero. R is two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we got a plus. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, I counted wrong. D is seven. So zero, A, one, two, three, four, five, six is the plus sign, and D is seven. So dent is there, and it is at the spot seven. Now watch what happens if I change this to a small d. What if it doesn't exist? Let's run that and see what happens. Very interesting. It returns a minus one. So if the string that you're searching for does not exist or is not found inside of that other string, the substring, if the substring is not inside the string, then you'll get a minus one. Let's hold that for a second. Okay, so uh, if it doesn't exist, you get that minus one. So, sorry for the interruption. Alrighty, and here's one that's actually pretty, uh, how can I put it, not intuitive, but here's what people try to do. Um, I'll, I'll make this its own section. Uh, comparisons, string comparisons. Okay, so. What if we want to know if two strings are the same? Okay, and this is where it gets a, it gets a little bit complicated. Um, so I can say system dot out dot print ln full name oops full name equals last yeah okay so full name equals last name. Plus. Now here's what people want to do. Full name equals, you use two equal signs, uh, if you've done other programming languages, last name. You cannot do that with strings in Java. Okay, you need to actually use the equals method. And last name. Okay. Now intuitively you should know that the last name and the full name are not the same. So let's see what happens when we do that. See what we get out of that. Okay, false. Okay, so that returns a boolean, true or false, because the full name does not equal the last name. And we can also do, instead of equals, we can do compare to. Full name, compare to last name. Oops. Full name dot compare to last bleh, last name and let's see what happens. Uh, okay, somebody forgot a parenthesis or deleted one. Yeah, I must have deleted a parenthesis or a deleted. I deleted a brace and didn't notice it. Happens all the time. 
So you notice the error message, reach the end of file while parsing. So it was looking for another one of these, and it was in the wrong spot. So this one should be lined up with that one. This one is lined up with, so notice how it actually kind of tells you here, okay, this one matches the one on line 46, and this one matches the one on line 44, which is kind of nice of JGRASP to do that for you. Um, so let's see what comparison does. So full name compared to last name. Minus three. Okay, so full name is Arthur Dent. Last name is Dent. Okay, so the full name comes before the last name in alphabetical order. So it's minus. Okay, and by minus three. Um, a, B, C, D. So Again, yeah, that's something to look into for the future, but just understand that compared to, um, if it comes before in alphabetical order, um, it is going to be a minus. If it's the same, it's going to be a zero. And if it comes after, it will be a positive number. Okay, but those are the ones you're going to need to know. Um, here's something that's very, very important, uh, especially for the Java AP exam. You'll see this type of question a lot getting one letter from a string. Okay. So we're going to use substring and index comma index plus this one. We can put a space there if we want. Okay. So for example, so system.out.println uh, full name substring six comma seven and I'm going to put full name not substring six comma seven don't forget that second parenthesis let's see what we get out of that okay it gave me the plus okay now why did it give me the plus because the plus is the sixth character using 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's pull this up a little bit. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is the plus. 7 is the D, but it's not inclusive. Okay, so if we wanted the D, we would do substring 7 and 8. So it's always the letter we want plus 1. Because it's not inclusive, it's not going to include the E. It's just going to stop there with the 7. Okay. Oops. Oh, I forgot to change it over here. Hopefully some of you caught that before I did. And that gives us the D. Okay. And moving on, we got a couple more things to cover here. Um, not necessarily related to strings, but uh, important nonetheless. So 2.8, something called a wrapper class. Okay. Classes, so integer. Double. Um, because Java is object oriented, there are times when we only want to use objects, uh, but there are other times, I guess, when we want to use the primitives. So Java has added something called the wrapper classes, and they are classes that wrap around a primitive. Okay, so what we can do is just like we've done before. So there is an integer class. Okay, notice it's essentially the same as the int but it's an integer class. Again, there are times when you'll want to use this. And so for example, age equals new integer. And let's say, I'm not 25, but I wish I were. Uh, it was a good, good year for me. And then I could do something double height equals new double. And I am 175.0 centimeters. Now this is basically the same as age equals 25 or int, sorry, pardon me, int age equals 25, and double uh, height equals 175.0. But we wanted to make them objects, not primitives. Okay, so to get a value, oops, from a wrapper class, okay, we, we use int value or double value. So system system.out.println okay so age plus 
age.int value in parentheses. That's a method. And system.out.println height. And height. And this is a double, so double value. So if I run that, let's see what happens. Okay, so 25 and 175. Very, very useful. Um, again, probably don't see the, the use of that now, but at some point it will come up. Uh, there are a couple other special values. There's min value, and there is max value. Uh, so because of the way that numbers uh, are represented in the computer's memory, uh, there are minimum values and there are maximum values. If you try to go over that value, you will have some trouble. So for example, uh, I'm just going to copy this from my, my notes. This is a lot of typing, and it's just basically demonstrating something. So the, the integer class, the integer wrapper class has min value. Now notice it is in capital letters with an underscore, just like we saw in an earlier video with speed of light. So this is a final value. This value does not change. Okay, and that is set by uh, is determined by Java. Could be could change based on your system, but uh, generally speaking, uh, it'll be the same for 64-bit uh, computers, I believe. Uh, if I'm wrong, I apologize. So let's take a look at that. So we've got the integer minimum value, integer max value, the double min value, and the double max value. And those co these come in handy when you're trying to do some sorting exercises. So you can see the minimum value of an integer is Two, negative 2,147,483,648 to 2,247,000,000. Okay, so notice it's off by one. Um, there's, there's a reason for that, but I won't go into it here. So if you want to use a higher integer value um, for the AP subset, you'd have to use a double, um, but there is actually something, a, a long integer you could use, but again, AP doesn't cover it, so I'm going to ignore that here uh, to keep things uh, relatively simple. Okay. Um, there's something called auto boxing. Um, Java very rarely does like convenient things, but this is one of them. Um, so even though I am using an object and not a primitive, uh, it will actually do it automatically for me. I don't have to use the methods because Java conveniently converts it for us. So you can basically treat it as a primitive and you will get the, the correct values out of there. So age 25, height 75. And then we can also do something along the lines of when we're assigning, just like we did with strings. Oops, we saw this with strings. So, but we can also do this with our integers. So instead of doing integer equals new integer, Oh, integer, let's say weight equals new integer uh, 80. Not anymore, but that's that's my goal. Um, so I could do it like this. I could just skip the new integer and make it 80. Okay, and that is part of the auto boxing. I could also do double BMI equals 25.5, and instead of doing the double dot or the double in parentheses with this. That'll also work. Okay. And then our final section here, um, we want to take a look at the math class. Okay. The math class is one of the Java classes that comes with Java, and it is just a set of math, uh, basically functions or methods that we can use to do some calculations. And we're going to look at some of the ones here uh, for the AP subset, there are a bunch of others. But for now, we'll just look at a few of them. So int x equals negative 43, for example. And then double y equals negative 2.0. And I just pick some, pick some numbers here for you. And so what I can do, well, actually, I'm just going to copy this because this is running a little bit long. And I'll go over it line by line for you. OK, so we have absolute value. Okay. Now, the math class is automatically imported. We don't have to actually import that ourselves. I'll talk about importing another time. So ABS is the absolute value. And then we have absolute value of Y. 
So it works on integers, it also works on doubles. We can square something using math.power. Notice we're using the class name dot the method. Um, this is the format for uh, static methods, which we'll, we'll get to at some point. So I want to say y to the second power. So negative 2.0 to the second point zero power is y squared. We can also do square root. Okay. Now it kind of makes sense that this should be a double. Um, notice this is a double, this is a double, y is a double. And then I'll talk a little bit about the random method when we see the result. Okay, so we got absolute value of negative 43 is 43. Absolute value of negative two is two. So it works with integers, it works with doubles. Y squared is 4.0. So 2.0 to the power of 2.0 is 4.0. Square root, square root of 25.0 is 5.0. And random, this is a built-in function for making random numbers. And what this does is it gives us a random number between zero and one. Zero is inclusive, one is not inclusive as far as I know. Uh, so let me run that again. Every time you run it, you will get a different number. So we can use that information. So we could do something like times 100 and let's see what happens. That gives us a random number. So 96.9. 86.9. So this will give us a random number each time, 48.1. Now we could cast that using int, if you remember from a previous lesson. Let's try that and see what happens. Okay, maybe, oh, I always mess it up when I do the casting. Uh, I'm probably thinking Python there. So don't forget the parentheses around casting. So this gives us a nice little integer that gives us 57. That gives us five. Now you have to play around and figure out what the limits are on this. Um, would we be able to get 100 out of there? Um, the answer is no. Uh, would we be able to get zero out of there? I believe the answer is yes on that one. So depending on the ranges that you want, uh, you use a different formula, but we'll get to that some other time. Okay, so that was a bit of a long one, um, about a half hour, um, but that was, is some important stuff there. So we looked at string objects, um, how to concatenate them, and how to create strings. And then we looked at using primitives, which we had done before, but it's good to, you know, look at it explicitly. We talked about escape sequences. Um, the ones we looked at were escape with quotation marks, escape with a slash. New lines, probably the one of the ones you'll use most commonly, and the tab method, the tab escape sequence, excuse me. Um, there's various string methods. The big one you're gonna be using a lot of is length. Um, substring is very, very important. You'll see a lot of questions on the AP exam using substring. So the sooner you get used to that, the happier you'll be. Oops, and that should be a one. Probably messed that up earlier. And, and also index of to see if a string exists inside of an existing string. Um, comparisons, we don't use two equal signs with this. We use the equals method. Uh, we use compare to. We don't to compare if something is where it is in alphabetical order. And then we can use substring to get one letter out. Okay, so it's always index plus one. Okay, we talked about wrapper classes, which put an object around uh, a primitive. And that comes in handy in, you know, in, in array lists and things you'll, you'll see later and how to get the value. But we also talked about the minimum values and the maximum values. And those will be useful when we do sorting later. And we talked about auto boxing, which is which is basically Java kindly converts it for you, so you don't have to worry too much about it, which is kind of weird, but uh, it's really convenient uh, compared to a lot of things in Java. And then finally, we talked a little bit about the math class. There's 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 plenty more going on in the math class, but these are the ones that mainly you'll see uh, in the uh, AP Computer Science uh, program. Okay, so stay tuned for more.